Peter Birkin is, to start with, a terrific expert on these issues. He uh, is the CNN national security analyst. He is one of the few people who interviewed uh, bin Laden, so he knows the subject intimately. And he's really done, I think, a service to the country and the world. This book, The Longest War, is a comprehensive history of al-Qaeda. And I think it's a, a great addition to this uh, literature. I think there are a couple of things that are new. One is really the extent of the reporting, the open source reporting, non-classified information about bin Laden's intent to attack American interests before 9-11. He points out that there were a number of articles, including one in the Washington Post in June uh, of 2001, indicating that bin Laden planned to attack the United States. So the notion that there was really nothing out there uh, indicating that the attacks were likely to happen really is not true. Secondly, he points out that al-Qaeda is actually a rather bureaucratic organization with things like leave policies and uh, uh, allowances for families and travel. It's, it's really startling to think that al-Qaeda is a parallel state organization and certainly played that role in Afghanistan before it was dislodged in 2001. One of the things, that really the central theme of Peter's book is that the 9-11 attacks were a strategic defeat for the United States and for al-Qaeda. It's clear why it was a strategic defeat for the United States. Obviously, we failed to prevent the attack and to anticipate it. It's less clear why, in Peter's judgment, and I think I agree with him, why it was a strategic defeat for al-Qaeda. It was a defeat in the sense that al-Qaeda underestimated the American response to 9-11. Because the United States had not really responded to previous al-Qaeda attacks, the 1993 World Trade Center bombing, the first attempt to bring down the World Trade Center, the uh, East Africa bombings in 1998, there were some pinprick uh, attacks against Afghanistan at the time, but nothing substantial. And then the coal bombing in October of 2000, uh, that led bin Laden to believe that the United States was a paper tiger and that there would again be, if any response at all, uh, just minor missile attacks against Afghanistan, or it might result in America's complete withdrawal from Saudi Arabia and the rest of the Muslim world, which is exactly what happened uh, back in 1983 when the Marine barracks was attacked in, uh, in Lebanon. Uh, the United States, of course, responded mightily and dislodged al-Qaeda from Afghanistan, and they no longer today have a safe haven. A haven. Of course, many of them have been killed and captured. Uh, the leadership ranks have been decimated. It's still a very, very dangerous organization, and Peter quite rightly makes that clear in the book. But the point is that al-Qaeda is a much weakened organization as a result of 9-11. And opinion around the world, including the Muslim world, has begun to turn against um, al-Qaeda. Um, that's the first thing I think that's uh, important to note. And he also spends a lot of time saying that there was a strategic uh, miscalculation, miscalculation on America's part by uh, going after uh, Saddam Hussein. Saddam Hussein did not have anything to do with 9-11. That's clear in retrospect. And uh, the resources that we uh, diverted from Afghanistan to Iraq resulted in uh, our inability to capture bin Laden when we had the chance to do that in Afghanistan. I want his comments about the events of the day, namely the unrest in the Arab world generally, uh, the spark that was lit in Tunisia that we see now in particular in Egypt that's spreading around the Arab world to include Yemen and Jordan. Uh, to what extent does that uh, provide an opportunity for al-Qaeda in particular and like radical Islamic movements to take power uh, in the region? You know, the immediate objective of bin Laden all along was to dislodge these autocratic rulers in the Middle East and to replace those leaders with fundamentalist uh, theocratic uh, regimes. Uh, it appears, at least to date, that each of these protest movements have been led by a wide variety of people from all walks of life, both secular and, and fundamentalist. And it, it, as we sit here today, it seems unlikely that those who will come to power uh, in Egypt, it's pretty inevitable that the Mubarak regime is gone, will uh, be Islamist in nature and certainly not Al-Qaeda-like, but I'm anxious to hear what Peter has to say about that point one. Of course, Peter writes this book, and we'll be discussing this book, in the context of the 10th anniversary of 9-11, and so the obvious question is what he thinks about the likelihood of another attack, uh, especially one between now and the 10th anniversary. It would be a huge propaganda coup for uh, Al-Qaeda to carry off another attack on or about the 10th anniversary. And I'm sure as we speak, plans are underway by Al-Qaeda to do just that. Another thing I'm anxious to probe uh, him with regard to, and he talks um, some about this in the book, is this new phenomenon that we have begun to see in the last year and a half or so of not just foreign terrorists, Al-Qaeda in particular, attempting to enter the United States and carry out another uh, terror attack on our soil, but also this phenomenon of homegrown terrorism foreigners who are either uh, 
have spent some time here, become legal residents of the United States, uh, or um, homegrown terrorists in the sense that they are um, American citizens born here who have been converted to Islam. That's a very worrisome uh, phenomenon, one that we had not seen in this country. It's been a phenomenon in Europe for quite some time, and the conventional wisdom was that the United States was insulated from that. It's pretty clear now that we are not.